What's up, you beautiful collectors and action figure fans? It's the one and only Optibottoms coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the new Infinity Gauntlet from the Marvel Legends series. Now, a lot of bigger name Marvel Legend reviewers haven't really done videos on this yet. So I thought... Fine. I'll do it myself. <laughs> For the package, though, you got a really cool image of the Infinity Gauntlet. You got a couple different things here in different languages telling you what it does, such as lights and sounds. You can see here it's an articulated electronic fist. And then throughout the rest of it, you see it's got that image, but with the fingers opened up, it says articulated fingers, kind of showing that. Uh, the side here has another one, it says articulated fingers. This side here, it says that it can uh, close up and it's got a fist lock display mode. You come to the back of the package, and this is where things get a little bit more descriptive. You can see, like I said, articulated fingers, authentic movie sounds, which we'll see. It does have that fist lock display mode and it's got pulsating stone glow or the stones pulsate and glow. And you can see lengthwise, it's actually 19 and a half inches or 49 and a half centimeters. So this is really big and you can see that by the package itself. Absolutely terrific and I am thrilled to get this here. So without further ado, let's get this out here and see how cool it actually is. Alright guys, so here we have the Infinity Gauntlet opened up and out of its packaging and as you can see, this thing is massive. As I said, the packaging shows this to be 19 and a half inches long and it weighs just shy of 3 pounds. Literally, it's like 2 pounds, 15.9 ounces. Now that is with batteries installed, so I don't know if that throws off the weight or whatever, but you get the idea, almost 3 pounds. And while made out of plastic, it does a really good job of looking really cool. Now, as I said, really quite large. Scaling up, you can see just how big it gets. And then you get to the hand of the gauntlet itself. And this is where a lot of the magic literally takes place. You can see that each one of the Infinity Stones are there. They are a semi-translucent plastic that, as the package did describe, do light up and it really nicely kind of illuminates the entire gem. Now, doing a little bit of history, identifying the various gems, the blue one here is the Space Stone and it was housed in the Tesseract, which is capable of controlling space itself, providing the user instant access to any location throughout the universe if used correctly. We also did see that the unique element that composes the Tesseract was also used to create advanced weaponry that was used by the Red Skull for his own sinister intent. Up next is the yellow stone here in the center, which as you can see is the biggest of them, which is the Mind Stone, which was originally housed in Loki's scepter, which was given to him, if you remember, by Thanos. When Thanos sent Loki to recover the Tesseract. So it's interesting that Thanos allowed one of the Infinity Stones to leave his possession itself. Now this one kind of threw some people for a loop because the scepter, if you remember, the module that held it was blue. The scepter, as well as the Mind Stone, was then used in various Hydra experiments which resulted in the Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver getting their abilities. Eventually, Ultron broke that blue protective casing, revealing the yellow stone, and was used to bring life to Vision. Up next is the red one, or Reality Stone. When in its basic natural state, it exists as the ether, a dark red viscous liquid, which acts as a symbolic force capable of being absorbed into the body of a living host, giving the user the ability to warp reality itself granting that person immense strength, durability, powers, and subjective influence over the universe. We first became aware of that in Thor The Dark World and was eventually returned to its container and given to the Collector by the Asgardians to protect it. Next up is the Purple or Power Stone, which originally protected in an orb container. The Power Stone is an incredible power source. It increases the user's physical abilities and allows them to manipulate energy, which when used at full potential, has enough power to obliterate an entire planet when unleashed. 
Originally shown to us in Volume 1 of the Guardians of the Galaxy, Thanos sought this and tasked Ronan the Accuser to acquire it in exchange for destroying Xandar. Instead, Star-Lord got it, not really knowing what he had, and then was able to wield it and control the power to destroy Ronan himself. Currently, the Power Stone is protected by Nova Prime on the planet of Xandar. And finally, down here on the thumb, is the Time Stone. Shown to us in Doctor Strange, it's actually a part of the Eye of Agamotto, which is an ancient artifact created by Agamotto himself, the first Sorcerer Supreme, presumably to contain and harness the power of the Green Time Stone. After being stored in it for an unknown period of time, it found its way to Karmataj. And as the name implies, it appears to be able to control the flow of time, be it on a small or massive scale. It was eventually placed back on the pedestal by Doctor Strange until he learned how to use it properly, which we did see him wearing again when he met Thor and Loki in Ragnarok. So that covers five of the six Infinity Stones. The last one here on the pinky is the Soul Stone. Little is known about the Soul Stone right now. However, in the recently released Infinity War Prelude comics, while Doctor Strange and Wong were talking, Wong explained that the Soul Stone could prove to be the greatest threat out of all of the Infinity Stones. Based on how the comics use it, it can literally change a person. Not necessarily mind control them, just change their very nature, change their soul. And that is a tremendous power altogether. When you combine them all, it makes the Infinity Gauntlet and the wearer of it just about unstoppable, really by any measure. So that's basically the rundown of the various powers that the Infinity Stones have, and why Thanos wants to use them <laughs> to basically bring balance to the universe. Using the power of the Infinity Stones, that's ultimately what he historically wanted to do. Now. Finally taking a look at this thing. I know I've been rambling for a long time. I'm sorry. But like I said, this thing is massive. It does take three AA batteries. You remove this portion right here and they go right underneath there. I think it's three. One, two, three. Yeah, I believe it's three batteries. You can also see the speaker right there. You put this back on. It clips on and it looks pretty good blended in there. You can see that these little slots here also work as uh, speakers. Now, uh, when I was looking at this initially, it didn't have a very metallic look. You can kind of see in here, there is some good wear in nice paint variation to give it kind of a bronzish, goldish kind of look to it. Now, it's not as gold as I would like it to be, but it still looks pretty good for a $100 prop toy, which is basically what this is. Much like the Iron Man helmet, now the Captain America shield, except for that metal version, and Mjolnir, these are basically prop toys, which they're toys that are kind of like props, but definitely more toyish. But I don't mind it really all that much. Come around to the other side, this is where things get a little bit more unfortunate. You can see a lot of screw holes. Uh, I do wish that there was a way to cover those up. People have even complained about the little joints here in the fingers. Those don't bother me nearly as much as the screw holes. I wish that there was some way that they could have covered that. You know what I mean? You can see like little bumps here. Why couldn't they give us little caps to put in there? But really intricate detail. You can see some nice sculpting on the various fingers. Well, the thumb has like this really cool texturing effect on it. And then the fingers again, just kind of look like chain mail of sorts. You can see the palm is nicely sculpted again. You got a nice variation with the paint. You can see all the different molded detail like along the side and you can see a lot of it here on the uh, the back of the hand down here by where the wrist area is and then looking here in the hand area again very nice ornate detail around the various kind of knuckles and things like that. The gems really do look good. Uh, coming in to take a closer look at that, well, if I can, there we go. Coming in to take a closer look. The Soul Stone, as you can see, really nice sculpted design. You can see that translucent nature. The Reality Stone looking very good as well. You see the Mind Stone, like I mentioned, is much larger. You can see it is sculpted. All, all these are sculpted differently, which is great. Now, the Space Stone looks really nice. The Power Stone, or uh, wait, what did I say? I, I forgot. This, this is the Power Stone. That's the Reality Stone. Uh, and then you have the Mind Stone, which is on there as well. And then again, you can see the thumb kind of guard 
on there. You look at the different fingers, you can see that that has different molding and sculpting work on the different digits themselves. Absolutely terrific. Now, on the inside here is where your hand goes. Uh, now, I do need to get a flashlight to kind of show you this. And here we go. Hopefully this works. But on the inside here, you can see very dark on the inside there. Uh, but you got a little handle that you hold. Ah. Uh, and then I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that. See those little tiny ring things uh, on the inside there. That's what your fingers hold on to to articulate the fingers. Uh, these actually don't have bits where you can put your fingers in there because obviously this is really big. So you can see the little pull levers. Now, depending on how big your thumb is, mine, I, I guess, really isn't all that big. You hold on to that lever, putting it all the way in, and then you grab hold of the different finger pieces. Uh, it is a little bit tricky to do because, I don't know, it's very difficult to, to show, but you can kind of see like my thumb right there, it bumps up against like the middle section right here of my hand, bumps up against that bar, and I can't really reach that thumb bit. I mean, I can, it's, it's not bad. Uh, and you can pull it down some and, when you do that, that's when you activate the different things and you can hear it really very, very nicely. Now, there's a couple different ways that you can activate things. I'm gonna pull this back out. You can just push on the mind stone and it, it is just a button and in doing so, you can see all the lights lighting up. Now I'll turn my lights off and you'll get a good look, but I mean, that actually lights up very, very nicely even with all my lights. Now, if you hold it, down, uh, I think it's like five seconds or something like that, the lights will slowly turn off. So again, pushing the button turns them on and you can see just how gorgeous those look. Uh, looking at all of them, uh, you can see coming in, you can see kind of a, a sparkly nature on the inside there. They all also do pulsate over time. You can see them kind of blink. Uh, let's see, well, I mean, it's kind of hard to see it. Um, just gonna stare at them for a minute, but over time they will uh, pulsate a little bit. Uh, oh, you can see like the purple one was going right there. You can see it just kind of pulsate over time, which does look really very nice. Now they will auto turn off, or again you can hold the button, which is basically just the mind stone, and then they will slowly fade and turn off. The other way that you can activate it is come around to the inside, hold on the bar, and then move the fingers. You pull the different levers, and when you do it, it will turn it on. And you'll also get like a sound of metal kind of replicating the fingers moving. So starting off here with the thumb. And again, that turns all the lights on. Uh, you can see it very nicely right there. It's on my left hand, so uh, it's harder to show. So. And then again, you move it. So again, that's my thumb on the inside here pulling down on that lever to make that move. Then all the other fingers also have that. Uh, it is a fairly stiff motion. And you can hear as you do it, each one makes that sound. When you do, and then, yeah, and then when you do pull them all closed and then release them, uh, you, well, I mean, if you play with it, it kind of, you can hear, it does that sound. Now, those are the only sounds that you get, but you can sit here and you can play with stuff and it is a little bit annoying uh, it, when you're doing it and you constantly hear that sound. But what you can also then do, and it, it's, well, I mean, you can pull them closed, but you got a little button right here that when you pull this down like so, and then you can just manipulate it with your uh, own hand. You can just bring these down until you hear it click, locking into place. And this is uh, the display mode for it, where you can just have it sit here. You have the semi-flat nature. It is a little bit rockery, uh, but if you just leave it there for a minute, it'll obviously stand still. One thing that I do wish is that these fingers came down more. I mean, you can see that they can come down, but they don't lock in that position. I, I think it would look a little bit better if you could lock it. Like I said, you can pull them closer. Um, 
just by itself. But unfortunately, like I said, it doesn't stay in a fist kind of position. And you can see uh, after a little while, the different lights turned off. So you can display it like this, which does look good. Uh, I wish you could leave it lit up all the time. Uh, the batteries obviously will die. That's unfortunate. There are different things that you can get out there to you know, put in replace for batteries and have wires and things and, and plug it in so that you could keep it lit up, but the wires would come out through the bottom here. So I don't, I don't know how much I would like that, but this is gorgeous. It, it really is. And then if you want to release it, you just take this little lever and slide it up and it releases the fingers so that you can uh, play with it again. I mean, that is really cool. Uh, it is, like I said, a very stiff kind of thing. So when you're pulling it, I'm feeling my fingers getting a workout and you hear the noise over time. So you can sit there and be like, hey, Kamora, come here. You know, you can sign of the devil, dude. Yeah, I'm not going to do the other one that I'm sure a lot of people are going to want me to do. Uh, this is still a toy and uh, there are still kids, but uh, I really do like this. Uh, I, I think that it, it is a gorgeous piece that as a, a huge fan of Marvel and the Avengers and everything like that, I think that this is a terrific piece to add to a collection. It, it just is gorgeous. Now, what's amazing, it, honestly, I'm, I'm, I, I would have expected this to be a lot more. This is a retail price of $99, which I think is pretty decent for this. Like I said, very large, heavy, lights, sounds, you got the articulated fingers. There's a lot that's in it. I do wish that it did have a little bit more of a gold color. The coloring's not bad. It looks good, but I think it could be a little bit better. But for 100 bucks. I can't complain, especially since we have just seen Hot Toys release a replica basically this size, does have the light up gems and everything. That's almost a thousand dollars. So obviously the paint's much better and it doesn't have articulated fingers. So you can't really play with it or even wear it for that matter. Um, I think a hundred bucks is a good price for this. I really do. So if you're a fan, I would absolutely recommend picking this up. It is slowly starting to trickle out to various retail locations, so if you're looking for it, good luck and happy hunting. Or as always, it's available right now at Big Bad Toy Store. So all you have to do for that is click on the link down in the video description. You'll go to BBTS where you can check out availability on this as well as the rest of the other Marvel Legends series prop replicas. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optobotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video, I would really appreciate you letting me know by hitting that thumbs up button. It really does go a long way towards helping me out, and I would absolutely appreciate it. Also, if you're new here, welcome. And before you go, make sure you subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you'll get instant email notifications whenever I upload a new video and you'll never miss out on a future review of mine. Or hey, if you already subscribed, now more than ever it's important to make sure that you're getting those email notifications. We all know just how unreliable that YouTube subscription box is and the best way to help support my channel and not miss out on any future reviews of mine is to click on that little bell right below this video and double check your settings to make sure that they're set so that you get those email notifications. And as always, until next time, be excellent to each other.